And basically we watch a lot of Harry Wong videos if I remember correctly. Hey Bianca here and welcome to Teach Like Bianca. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you eight simple tips for substitute teachers. Now I was a substitute teacher for many years. I actually got my start in education in 2006, responding to an ad to become an emergency substitute teacher. It's almost like the stars had a line because I just had quit a government job where I worked as a student office assistant and it was so boring that I was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. And then a couple weeks later, I see an ad in the paper, cause this was 2006 and people still put jobs in newspapers, looking for emergency substitute teachers. There was this big uh, substitute teacher shortage, which there still is. And I decided to apply. Went to a one day training. The biggest thing that I remember from that training is watching Harry Wong videos, like some super old videos from like the early nineties or something like that. I don't know, but I, that's all I really remember. Uh, but I was all signed up and ready to go just a couple weeks later. Like my fingerprints came back clear, my transcripts were on file. And the next thing you knew, I was in a fifth grade classroom substitute teaching. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I needed to follow the plans that were left by the teacher. Um, and I did so, and I felt like time went by so fast and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I knew that, uh, I was going to go back and just continue substitute teaching until I graduated with my bachelor's degree in English to become a journalist. So I was never even planning on being a teacher. I just signed up so I can get a job. And I was like, oh, they're paying $100 a day. This is great. And I didn't know at the time, like $100 a day back then, I was quite a bit for me and as a college student. And then um, some of the other districts are paying like, you know, 135 a day, 150 a day. Um, but I didn't even know anything about that. I was just like, oh my goodness, a hundred dollars a day. I'm, I'm sold. I'm in. And I continue to substitute teach for the next couple of years. So the next year uh, in 2007, I had my son and then, uh, I started substitute teaching for part of 2008. After I had my son, I was all in and I was like, I want to become a, I want to become a teacher because the journalism track that I was going, I was working part time for a local newspaper company and I was out doing interviews. Sometimes I was out doing interviews at like eight at night, nine at night. And I was like, I, this isn't going to be sustainable for having a family and being able to take care of my son the way that I wanted to. I felt like being a teacher, I can have the same hours and the same uh, time with my son, especially when he started school. So he would be at school. I would be at school. He would have vacation. I would have vacations for the next couple years after I, I substitute taught. Um, I also was, I went back to school to get my master's degree so that I can become a teacher. But then when I did get my first initial teaching certificate in 2010, I had to substitute teach that for the next two school years. So I got my teaching certificate, uh, in the middle of the school year, but it was, should have been, it was around the time where I should have been able to pick up a job in like the fall of 2011. No, the fall of 2010. At that time where I lived at the time, there wasn't a lot of positions that were open. It was difficult to find a job. And that happened fall 2010 and the fall of 2011. So for the next couple of years, I did long-term subbing. I substitute taught regularly and I um, made sure to sign up at multiple districts, which is something if you live in an area that has uh, multiple di districts around you, sign up at all the districts. After I signed up at all the districts, I just wanted to get um, my, I just wanted to get more practice in the classroom. But I ultimately, of course, you ultimately want your own classroom because it's difficult going somewhere new, learning uh, the new rules of each building that you go to and uh, being just trying to adapt to each classroom um, and students that you're in. But I did very well during substitute teaching. I got called back all the time. Um, and one of the biggest things that I did was I went to a school district where a lot of teachers wouldn't go. Uh, it was a school district that had a lot of, uh, behaviors, difficult, be challenging and difficult behaviors with their students. But I was all in, I was like, I'm going to, you know, I was a challenging and behavior student. It was easy for me to deal with 
those types of kids. So the substitute teaching aspect after I actually got my teaching certificate, actually I felt like helped me become a better teacher um, than if I would have jumped out of college and went straight into the classroom. So I was able to know what I liked and didn't like in the classroom, what I wanted to adapt from other teachers, from being in their classroom, and it just helped set me up for a better future as a teacher, being a substitute teacher. So let's go ahead and get into the eight tips I felt were very beneficial for me as a substitute teacher. Starting with number one is to have a tote bag or a backpack. So having a tote bag and a backpack um, is because you're going to need to bring some stuff with you. You shouldn't be walking in there empty handed with nothing in your hands, maybe besides, you know, your coffee cup. The next one is to bring your own supplies and materials. And when I mean bring your own supplies and materials, that's bringing your own pencils, notebooks, uh, worksheets for early finishers. And when I mean worksheets, I mean like word searches, coloring sheets, something for students to, to stay busy with. But if they don't have the materials with them, like let's say a student doesn't have a pencil, please do not go inside the teacher's desk and grab a pencil. Have like your own pack of pencils that you can easily just distribute if you need to. I mean, from now my own experience as a teacher, having a substitute teacher take a pencil out of their desk and giving it to a student, I don't, why would you do that? <laughs> Usually teachers have systems set up for this and if a student doesn't have their pencil, usually a teacher is not going to take one out of their desk to give to another student. There's usually um, extra pencils somewhere in the classroom. I was able to combat this as a substitute teacher, but just by going to Dollar Tree or taking advantage of the back to school sales that uh, would happen every year and just buying uh, pencils in bulk. Now, I also want to tell you if you are taking things out of a teacher's desk. A teacher's gonna know if you took something out of that desk and had given it out or just took something for whatever the reason. So just please don't go on teacher's desk and take things or move things around. It's like their own personal space. Next tip, tip number two or tip number three is to bring snacks. And um, this is really because you may get called to cover another class. And this happens a lot in the middle school, high school area, but you may need to go cover another class or maybe you need to cover lunch duty or you need to be somewhere else in the building. And then you don't get to have what you thought was maybe a full lunch. If you do come across a, a district or work in a building where they have you um, do another type of work during your planning, and you feel like you're not gonna get enough time to eat because 30 minutes isn't a lot to eat for anybody or whatever the case might be, but 30 minutes is usually the norm uh, in the state that I work in for most districts. So um, usually that time I'm just trying to get my ducks in a row, get things organized, make sure things are clean. Having snacks on hand just in case you need to eat in a hurry or need to be somewhere else. You wanna be present and depending on if you wanna get a job, either that, next school year or maybe a long-term position, you want to just be ready and alert for different things that may arise. And you want to be active and say yes to a lot of things. To piggyback off of bringing snacks, step four is just to bring a water bottles because you're going to be using your voice a lot. You're going to be thirsty. You don't want to really use the water fountain water. Um, and some buildings have like the water club where they pay money every month to use like the Culligan water or something. Just make sure that you have a little water bottle or something to drink on hand to keep you from getting, keep you from getting your throat dry. Cause I have asthma. So sometimes when my throat gets dry, I just automatically start coughing a lot. So having that water on hand really helps me out. So make sure you have your water bottle or ha have something to drink and have it with you uh, regularly. The next tip is having a list of jokes. And these of course are school appropriate jokes, but it, they're great for icebreakers. Um, introducing yourself to students and kind of just getting to know the sense of humor of the classroom, I guess you can say, but having a list of jokes that you could tell at the beginning of the class or the end of class, and maybe having students um, tell a funny joke as well. You can use that as an incentive for, uh, uh, for the end of class, or maybe just if you need a break in the classroom. So having a list of jokes is great. The next step is wearing appropriate shoes. Now I have a story about not wearing appropriate shoes. Well, I thought they were appropriate at the time, but um, I was wearing these little like kitten heels, 
uh, and the students were taking a test, but they it wasn't carpet flooring, it was n uh, linoleum flooring, and I just had to walk around. Um, so it was very annoying, so I had to ended up take, taking off my shoes to walk around the classroom and check in with kids. That's one aspect of it, just to have like some shoes, some backup shoes with you, um, because you may get changed to do like a, a PE sort of uh, sub job, which PE sub jobs are fun and the students want to play with you and play different games with you. But so just making sure you have either a different, even a different set of clothes, uh, just in case you are called to do PE instead of uh, whatever your regular job is, because sometimes you might get to the building and, and they'll say, oh, I had to switch you to somewhere else. Having a different set of shoes and different set of clothes really works well and will work in your favor overall. The next tip is do not sit down and I usually, I usually try to use the 80, 20 rule. So 80% you're walking around the classroom. You are back and forth, uh, from one student to the next, checking in with them, making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And then 20% you're, you might take a seat really quick, maybe for attendance or to write a quick note. So 80, 80% 80 walking, 20% sitting. It's great for classroom management. And if you do have a, a principal or somebody that might just all of a sudden just pop in, which happens a lot. You want, they want to see you being active and with your students. Um, there has been times where I've been told that they used to, that some substitute teachers would just come in and read the newspaper or they'll come in and bring a book and just sit with them. You know, teachers don't want a babysitter. They actually want somebody that is engaging with the students and building a relationship with the students, even though you're just a substitute teacher, because I don't want to feel like they're getting behind in their own lesson because you can at least move the lesson, move what they're supposed to do along just a little bit more. The last tip is just to tell a story. And I talk about this in my engagement and motivation video, but telling a story really engages the student. So if you're a guest teacher, your students are so interested about you, regardless of what grade level they're in, they want to know more about you. So one of the ways that I was able to capture and, and and engage and motivate students to do work is, is telling them a story. And I would tell them stories from when I was in school. I would tell them stories from when I was in college. Um, I would tell them just stories about like vacation and just a variety of different things that they may or may not have wanted to hear, but they were seem very engaged to listen to these stories. So it was very helpful uh, for me to tell a story, just how I, was, how, I, how I told you a story about how I became a substitute teacher, ended up ultimately becoming a full-time teacher and having teaching as a career. Telling a story is just a way for students to really know a little bit more about you because they wanna be able to be comfortable with you and it's very helpful, as well as just building those relationships with your students. I also want to add in some quick tips that are helpful. So one of the quick tips is make sure that you are dressed for the position. If you are looking to get a job after substitute teaching, either in that building or in that district or just somewhere, and you need a reference for your being a substitute teacher, because maybe you are called back regularly and they, they know you, make sure that you are dressed the part because going to a substitute teaching position is like going to a job interview every single day and getting that practice all the time. So make sure you are dressed to impress um, and that you are ready to be a teacher. The next extra tip that I do have is if you are substituting um, elementary school, for example, go out and hang out with the kids at recess. That is a great way to build relationships uh, with the students. They're going to love you for it. And it is also shows the staff members that you are engaged with your students. You're, you're really trying to get to know them on another level that is outside the classroom. And then something that's also um, great is getting like stickers or rubber stamps, um, even certificates to pass out for students that did very well. This works great for the K. I want to even go up to K through seventh grade level students because they still love stamps. They still love stickers. Um, they're, they want to get certificates so they can go home and show their parents. And it's just very rewarding to show that you are giving some sort of positive behavior, um, management skills within the classroom. And a lot of people, the staff will see that. 
So those are all my substitute teaching tips. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them below. I am working on something for substitute teachers more in the future, a substitute teaching pack where you can have a packet of things for early finishers um, that will help you keep your classroom together like glue. So please uh, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.